Seoul is considering launching a missile strike on North Korean servicemen who were transferred to Russian territory to participate in combat operations against the Ukrainian armed forces. This was reported by the South Korean publication Daily NK. The publication contains screenshots of correspondence between ruling party Parliamentary Defense Committee member Han Ki-ho and South Korean National Security Directorate Chief Shin Won-sik. If we can reach an agreement with Ukraine, it would be good to bomb and launch missile strikes on units of the puppet North Korean army in order to inflict losses on them and then feed these losses to the DPRK in a psychological war, suggests Han Ki-ho. Yeah, we'll look into it. I already held an emergency meeting today to develop measures. Shin Won-sik answers. In addition, a member of the Parliamentary Defence Committee proposed that the head of the National Security Department send liaison officers to Ukraine. And so it will be done. The representative of the presidential administration responded. Let us recall that earlier, the South Korean intelligence service reported that several thousand North Korean troops had allegedly been transferred to the territory of the Russian Federation who are stationed at military bases in Vladivostok, Usurisk, Khabarovsk and Blagoveshchensk. In return, the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated that North Korean troops had already been transferred to the Kursk and Saratov regions. It is worth noting that the publication by the South Korean publication of screenshots of telephone correspondence between a high-ranking deputy and an employee of the presidential administration of South Korea, in fact, is the basis for a diplomatic scandal. After all, officials are discussing the issue of bombing Russian territory. Let us add that there has been no official reaction from Moscow to this yet. The US Department of Defense estimates that 10,000 North Korean soldiers have been sent to Russia to train and fight against Ukraine in the next few weeks. This number of soldiers from the DPRK is much higher than previously expected and raises fears that the war in Ukraine could expand as a result of Pyongyang's military intervention. This was stated by Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh at a briefing. According to Sabrina Singh, some of the 10,000 North Korean troops stationed in eastern Russia moved closer to the Ukrainian border. Last week, the US department predicted not 10,000 but 3,000 military from the DPRK. Some of these soldiers have already moved closer to Ukraine and we are increasingly concerned that Russia intends to use these soldiers in combat or to support combat operations against Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region of Russia near the border with Ukraine, Singh told reporters. Iran on Monday warned the United States that it is complicit in Israel's attacks against the country by providing technical expertise and advanced military equipment and will bear its consequences. Iran's UN Ambassador Amir Saeed Iravani delivered the warning at an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council called by his government following Israeli airstrikes against the country early Saturday. While Iran has consistently championed diplomacy to address regional challenges and foster peace, Iravani said, it reserves the right to respond at a time of its choosing to this act of aggression by Israel. Israel's UN ambassador Danny Dannon, speaking immediately afterward, called Iran the puppet master behind Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon and pointed to its October 1st launch of at least 180 missiles into Israel. We promised that their actions would not go unanswered, he said. Iran's leaders chose to assault Israel, to destabilize the region and unleash chaos. They promised us destruction. We have answered with strength, but also with restraint. But Danon warned that any further Iranian military action will be met with consequences that are swift and decisive. Danon urged Iran to stop its reckless pursuit of dominance through violence and terror, saying Israel will not hesitate to protect its people and sovereignty. Au département des affaires politiques et de la consolidation de la paix et au département des opérations de décider. Le Conseil de sécurité va maintenant aborder. We condemn Israeli aggression in the strongest possible terms. Israel hostile action are a blatant and dangerous breach of international law and the UN charter.
particularly the principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity and prohibition on threats or the use of force against the sovereignty of states. These principles are not merely abstract ideal, they are foundational pillars upon which the international peace and stability rely. Regrettably, unwavering and unconditional support provided by the United States to Israel, coupled with its obstruction of the Security Council mandate as a permanent member has emboldened Israel to persist in its crimes and aggression in Gaza and Lebanon, and now against Iran, gravely undermining regional peace and security. The United States' involvement in Israeli aggression through its provision of technical expertise and advanced military system to Israel has further instigated and emboldened Israel to conduct its aggressive attack against Iran. Therefore, the U.S. government is complicit in Israeli aggression and will bear its consequences. Furthermore, the United States has already been complicit in the ongoing war crimes and genocide, genocidal campaign targeting civilian and civilian infrastructure both in Gaza and Lebanon. The vast majority of bombs Israeli drops on Gaza and Lebanon are U.S. made. The international community cannot and must, and must not remain silent in the face of such violation. The price of this silence is evident in Palestine and Lebanon, where Israel impunity perpetuates a vicious cycle of violence and instability across the region. We call upon the Council to condemn Israeli actions unequivocally and to hold it accountable for its systematic and recurrent violations of the international law. Iran's leaders chose to assault Israel to destabilize the region and unleash chaos. They promised us destruction. We have answered with strength. No sovereign country would tolerate hundreds of ballistic missiles aimed at its civilian population. No responsible government would allow its people to remain under constant threat. On Friday night, Israel acted as any nation would to defend its citizens, secure its borders, and neutralize an immediate threat. The contrast of the manner in which we executed our operation with Iran's missile attack could not be starker. While Iran recklessly aimed their missiles at entire civilian communities, cities, Tel Aviv, Haifa, Israel utilized the most precise munitions in the world to focus solely on military targets. Israel remains resolute. We will continue to act in defense of our people with precision, strength, and an unbreakable commitment to the safety of our citizens. The failure to hold Iran accountable is an endorsement of their tactics. This council's silence in the face of Iran's aggression sends a message to Tehran that its actions will go unchecked, that it may continue down this path without consequence. To the members of this council, we call on you to act. Enough empty words, enough statements of concern. The Iranian regime must face real consequences for its actions. We demand immediate and crippling sanctions targeting Iran's military and economic infrastructure. Designate the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist organization it is. Isolate Iran diplomatically, but most importantly, take the necessary measures to prevent a lunatic regime from attaining nuclear capabilities.